Kardashians are here. Episode one of the Kardashians is here and I can't believe it took me this long to like shoot this video. I watch it immediately. Um, but I was thinking about how I am really going to structure this content. Um, so I just watched it because I couldn't wait any longer. But it took me a couple of days to really watch it again and make notes. And let me tell you, I have so many notes. Like watching the Kardashians now is so different to how I used to watch it like in high school like you just used to consume and be so into it but like the show has changed a lot even though it feels so familiar and I'm so glad they made this change because they think if they are going to keep doing the show it needed a change and I am obsessed so let's get right into it because there's so much that I want to get into. Starting with the introduction. I thought it was so cool, so modern. I love the drone shot. So if you didn't see it, it was like a drone shot through every sister and Chris, like their um, perspective at the time. And then they're all kind of talking about me the meetup at Kim's house for the barbecue. Courtney's with her family. Chloe is busy with building at the house. Um, Kendall says that she's not going to be there because she's sick and Chris, Kylie and Kim are all at work but they're all talking about meeting up for the barbecue later so I just wonder what the introduction is going to look like for every episode like is each episode's intro going to be centered around them talking about meeting up for the family get together or I don't know there is no generic introduction to the series Otherwise, I would have played it on episode one, on this episode. So I just wonder what the intros are going to look like for the rest of the season. Um, I mean, it does make sense that it is or could be centered around meeting up at the get-together because they do talk about the difference in filming is that it's very focused around um, each sister and Chris individually and then they come together at the end. So that would be a really smart way of um, trying to control the intros but having it different every time. But I wonder if they're going to change the music because it was very upbeat, eh? It caught me off guard a bit in the beginning. <laughs> But I love the overall look of it, like the drone shots, the freeze, um, what is it, like freeze shots of um, the sisters and Chris. Like it's very like modern boss bitch and also like in the moment and it's not like this just generic intro that's the same every single time. So everyone gets together at Kim's house for the barbecue and um, it reminds me a lot of the first episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians where there was also a party at Chris and Bruce's house but this <laughs> barbecue is way more mild. Chris and I mean at the first party Kendall and Kylie were like 9, 10 years old making drinks at a bar and at this one it's just like the family very intimate, very calm. Um, so so everyone's updating us on life without the cameras and I don't think it was that long that they stopped shooting and started shooting for the new show. But where they are now, um, Chris is talking about all the brands that she's managing. She's up in the gym, up early. And that's such a Kardashian thing. Like, and it's so funny because it's actually something that Courtney started um, doing gym really early in the morning before they do glam. And that's where it starts off with Chris. And she's just in mama gym mode like running all the brands up in the gym, working on her fitness, looking good. I will say my girl looked good when she pulled up at Kim's house in that dress. I was like, this woman looks like their older sister and not their mom. Like, my girl looks good. The devil works hard, but Chris Jenner works harder. Miss Kylie Jenner is actually in the house and I'm very proud of her for showing up. That's very off-brand for her. What's also off-brand is seeing her pregnant on the show and she's looking beautiful. Um, Kim says that she can see already what she's having and you know Kylie's not giving us much but she's showing up which is beautiful and she's also keeping secrets from the family as to what the gender of the baby is and I predict that there must be some kind of uh, baby or gender reveal on the show and maybe that's why her baby shower was also so gender neutral. So I just wonder when she's going to reveal it and I hope they keep that for the show because it doesn't really look like Kylie's going to give us much, you know? But she's looking gorgeous pregnant. When Chloe and Tristan arrive, I'm just like, oh. I already know that he's 
you know, cheating on you and he's making a baby on you right now and are you pitching with this man? Honestly, like, I... But at the end of keeping up, we knew that she was already, like, she's always open to working things out with this man and it just kills me. It frustrates me. I don't know why she insists on having the storyline. It's going to be this and Tristan and the cheating scandal and being a single mom and being a great aunt and building her house. Honestly, that's what I predict from Chloe for the show because anyway, but they there. Chris is even happy that Tristan's there. You know, but we know that it's temporary, so I can fit it for now. And then I finally get to see Courtney and Travis interact on camera. Like, you always see the pictures and I see everything on social media, but I have been waiting for the show to start so that I can actually see the chemistry. Do you know what I mean? They've always been friends. He's been on the show here and there, but in a friend capacity. And it's interesting to see them together. I think that she's glowing. I think that she has warmed up a lot. I think that she reminds me of season one, Courtney. Also very much mirroring uh, the first episode, season one, that party at Chris's house. Her and Scott were doing exactly what her and Travis, or what her and Travis were doing at this barbecue. While everyone is at the barbecue, St. Um, Kim's eldest son w runs into the room and he shows her that the game that he's playing has a character for her crying face. When they clicked on the crying face, it shows that th there's like this pop-up that shows that there's going to be a part two to Kim and Ray J's uh, sex tape. And like, the only reason I knew that the sex tape thing was going to happen was because um, Kanye did tell us that it's going to happen on Instagram, but I didn't know it was going to be in episode one and in this way. I also don't know if this is like real, that this actually happened, that this is really the way that they found out about this, about this, because it is real, but like, is this really how the family found out? But anyway, what's funny to me is she calls Chloe across the room and it's like the first person she shows this thing to. Because she's like, Chloe, will I be able to understand? And she's like walking, like panic to walk towards Chloe. <laughs> and you just see Tristan in the background, stressed as fuck. Because obviously he's been fucking and cuck even in that time. And he's like, oh, is this where I get caught again? <laughs> So this is where they find out about it. So they don't know if this is real or what this is. So they carry on with a barbecue. And this is where Kim announces that she has been invited to host SNL. And the family congratulates. I mean, Courtney hardly even knows. It's because she literally is has her tongue down Travis's throat at that point. But anyway, um, they talk about that and they congratulate her. She is wondering if she should do it. They hadn't at that point announced that she was going to. So she's kind of doubting herself in that moment. Um, she's wondering if she's doing things, you know, for Chris, for her family, if this is really her, if she can really do it. But her family encourages her to do it. And I'm glad they did because she was, it was iconic in my opinion. Chris mentions that Kendall isn't there because she has the flu. And then we have the weirdest video diary ever where like Kendall jumps into the shot and she's like, actually, I had COVID. But you'll get me for the rest of the episode. And I'm like, this is so weird. It was jarring to me, actually. It made me feel uncomfortable because she breaks the fourth wall in a way that she has never done before with the most amount of energy I've ever seen her in my entire life. And it's just so far away from her own personality that it made it weird. Was I the only one who found that weird? Sorry, it's random, but I just wanted to say I was really uncomfortable. <laughs> They also talk about who Kim is going to choose as her musical guest for her hosting SNL. Um, and they debate whether, you know, she should go with Kanye or not. On the one hand, um, it would be really comfortable for her. She could rely on him. Um, but it would also be like a really safe space for her. But also they're going through a divorce. People would be watching just the way they interact with each other. And like the, it would also steal from her moment. So should she just choose someone else and have a moment on her own? And she does go with that. I can't even, I don't even know who her, who her uh, musical guest was. Anyway, they also talk about, or Chloe and Kim specifically, talk about whether they should be feeling bad that Scott's not there. Like the kids are all there and all the characters for the show um, are there. Should I call them characters? I don't know what to call them. But anyway, Scott's on the show and getting paid. So shouldn't he be at the barbecue? 
just if this is a work thing, but it's obviously not, it's just a family thing, whatever. Um, but should they be feeling bad? Because this is what Scott has always said. He says he, this is his greatest fear that if, if Courtney moves on or if they just move on, that he will start being excluded from the family and he doesn't have another family like he's really on his own he's an only child and he doesn't have parents um but it just sparks this debate again that we had in previous seasons was like does he deserve to be there and then courtney jumps into like onto screen again like Kendall in video diaries and kind of addresses the conversation that Kim and Chloe are having at the barbecue and it's very weird because she does express like I gave Scott 10 years and she breaks the fourth wall directly like speaking I don't know if she's speaking to the audience or if she's speaking to Kim and Chloe's conversation I think specifically um and says oh, i gave him 10 years of my life and i'm moving on and i shouldn't be made to feel wrong for knowing what i deserve i finally know what i deserve blah, 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 all those great things and that's why i just see her like standing up for herself like boss bitch yes but like that moment felt that moment just felt very artificial to me like am i the only one no one has spoken about this so just let me know if you guys also felt like that was weird like i like the content of the video diary what she said what she was giving but just just felt out of character chloe then visits scott's house and it's good to see scott on screen but i will like i scott <laughs> scott used to be one of my favorite characters and still is like he's very funny he's like reality tv gold but scott sounds like the same but he looks dead inside honestly i'm a bit worried about scott and i think everyone is and that's why chloe's there to figure out like how he feels um and yeah, they just talk about him moving on to more age-appropriate girls. And he kind of cringes at having to date someone older than 30. And I'm like, mm, I don't know why the producers would have left that in there. Because that's a really cringe thing for him to say. Especially with Scott's reputation of like dating such younger girls. I don't know why they would just leave that there. But he definitely expresses to Chloe that he feels left out by the family. But I agree with Chloe. Um, especially after he's like so clearly still in love with Courtney and he on social media has proven to us all that he cannot handle Courtney moving on that it's better that he wasn't there she says that they protected him because um Chloe doesn't think that he can handle seeing Courtney be so in love and affectionate and then he that scene that little scene ends with him saying do I even mean anything to anyone and that's very sad talk about this scene other than it was just time or like time for me to see Courtney and Travis together it's just them hanging out with Penelope and her friend at his studio and Courtney looks like a teenager like she looks so in love but she's like standing there watching him like I don't know box and like they're playing table tennis and he's drumming with with Penelope which is so cute um but it's just good to see her so happy. Like the scene really doesn't mean anything. Oh, she does actually in that scene, she talks about how they got together. I'm sorry. I should maybe look at my notes. Um, They talk about how they got together. At first, we obviously know that they were friends and the kids were friends and they would hang out, do stuff with the kids and do church stuff together. And then they had this movie night where Courtney made the first move and, you know, just made her intentions clear. Then we are in Kim's SNL fitting. She doesn't actually fit anything that she wore in her monologue. She wore that pink outfit, but she's, you know, trying on different looks. And she talks about being an underdog. And she talks about the lead character of Will and Grace. I actually don't know what her name is. Deborah someone. Um, who made a comment on Twitter saying that, like, she doesn't understand why Kim Kardashian would host SNL like that the, there are better people in the world even though she herself has not you know for her acting been invited to SNL um and I think that Kim's um Kim by Kim not even calling her by her name and just calling her the, someone from Boiling Grace is giving the exact same energy that she was giving that tweet being like who is Kim and Kim was like who is she but um she wants to surprise people and do well and she does and I'm proud of her for that then we 
skip to the most annoying people in the world, Chloe and Tristan. Um, they are hanging out at our house. He's just about to leave for like a basketball or something. So I'm just glad he's leaving. They talk about, you know, they're good, they're co-parenting well. And he's like a good co-parent, she says. Um, and they t interestingly, in this little scene, they talk about him going to therapy. Um, and bring up his past cheating. They even mention, you know, when he cheated on a nine months pregnant. They talk about growing together, working back on getting together in his mind. Um, even though Chloe won't say it. I feel like that's what they're doing. Because she even calls it couples therapy. Chloe says she's never been a monster to him, even though she could. And he thanks her for that. He says he appreciates it. And you know why? Chloe sees how he treats his other baby mamas and their kids with him. And Chloe doesn't want that. She wants a good co-parenting relationship. So she's rather going to keep it cute. She did that when she was nine months pregnant and she let him in the delivery room. She's mentioned that on um, interviews that she did recently that she would rather keep the moment as perfect as she can for her for true. And I think that's what Chris Jenner did as well. She talks about it in her book and you can hear all the sisters kind of mirror that sentiment of keeping things good and always speaking well about the partner so that you can have this good co-parenting relationship for your kids. But he definitely wants to get back together be a family and have more kids really really bitch and then you end up making a baby on her in this time like this is what kills me they both they both say trust takes trust takes time they both say that and they have no truth between them true their daughter is the only truth anything related to truth between them and it's just sad because here she's starting another season of just being made to look like a fool. And she chooses it. In this whole scene, you can see that she would rather work things out. She, If he can show her and really truly be that person, she will forgive him. But I'm glad that he doesn't. And he proves who he really is. And now she can be really done. So obviously this entire episode is about the it girl of the family came in we just keep talking about snl and she talks about who's going to be attending from the family and there's some foreshadowing going on um when she mentions pete davidson telling her that she'll be okay on snl like as long as they can read cue cards she name drops this fucking entire episode and she's like sarah silverman um gave her a kanye joke and i thought it was a quite an amazing joke that they didn't end up doing and um it's this joke where he sits in the audience with like a mask on or something, but she knows that it's really him. And then he asks, do you believe in second chances? And she's just like, no. <laughs> and I thought that would have been freak funny. And she said, if Dave Chappelle tells Kanye that that's funny, that he'll do it. But obviously Dave Chappelle said no. Kim asked about the SNL team, asking her if she can act, sing, dance do accents and she said i can do none of them and you know what a lot of people discount kim and they you know say you know you don't have any talents and she like the makeup artist reminded her like you've made a really good fucking career off of just being yourself and if you've watched her show her hosting that's exactly what she did she did attempt some of those things the acting um the rapping even you know but what's good about kim and this kardashian family is that they can laugh at themselves and allow themselves to be a part of a joke they can take it and i think that's what made her really successful and if you haven't checked it out guys do kim chloe and courtney meet for lunch and while they wait for courtney chloe is doing bodysuit feedback um for schemes asking for wider material on the vaginal area of a bodysuit <laughs> random and kim talks about having to wait like she before coming to the lunch she has to wait on kanye waiting for her outfits because he's still styling her at this point they are remaining friends and maintaining their styling relationship and he's she says he wants to retire and be her full-time stylist I don't know how true that is, but my girl says she wants some independence and wants to choose, you know, what she's been wearing. But ever since that time, it seems like she's still been styled by him because they have both been doing the Balenciaga campaign. And I'm actually excited to see what Kim, if there is going to be a post Kanye Kim fashion era. Because my girl's been looking good these days, eh? I won't lie.
The scene of the three of them at lunch like reminds me of a lot of the scenes of keeping up with the Kardashians with them either going to lunch somewhere but the restaurants used to be fully packed you know because no one cared that they were there or they used to just get those mousse salad lunch bowls and just like shake them and that felt more authentic this didn't feel very authentic to me it seemed like it was trying to mimic that scenes of them just going to lunch and talking about life in this scene they are talking about Scott and um Kim um Courtney talks about um, when <laughs> Scott sent her uh, uh, messages that he had sent to Eunice. Do you guys remember when Eunice uploaded to his stories and said, Scott wasn't trying to be um, friends with him now, now that Courtney was showing full PDA in Italy with um, Travis and he was definitely feeling some type of way. And she was like, this is why I don't want him invited to stuff because he can't handle it and she doesn't want to ma be made to feel like what she's doing is bad. If Scott did some healing work, worked on himself, was in a healthy, age-appropriate relationship where they could be at a good place and co-parent well, then I think that Courtney would be able to have him around for family things because I don't think she's trying to be malicious and not invite him to stuff. I just think that Scott is so in love with her that she knows that he can't handle seeing her so in love and so affectionate with Travis and they just aren't there yet. So Chris, Chloe and Courtney come over to Kim's to help her pack or she, she's packing for SNL and she is on the phone with her lawyer and the Roblox game and thing has progressed to figuring out that Ray J's little manager is threatening to release the second sex tape of unreleased footage from the first one. Like it's messed up that they are really where they were in the first season of Keeping Up With The Kardashians. And Chloe says that, she says, isn't that a good omen? And Kim's like, yeah, no, thanks, uh, good omen. So she's on the phone with her lawyer and Tracy, um, the Kim Kardashian West brands manager. And she says the message is more important than like the money. And Chloe says, and I'm sorry that I'm laughing, but it's a funny moment. It's not funny about the sex, but the spirits are all still good in the room at the time. And Chloe says, you're protecting yourself and your reputation for your children's sake. And then Kim goes on the phone. Yeah, I'm protecting myself for my reputation for my children's sake. And Chloe and Chris turn to each other and go, mm. <laughs> and it's such a funny moment. Like whenever Chloe and Chris are around, like something funny is bound to happen. So she basically gets off the phone with the lawyer and Tracy and she says, scare the shit out of those people. She then calls Kanye to let him now know what's happening and he hasn't even picked up the phone yet and you can see her mood ch she's emotional and she starts crying and chloe's like it's okay and she's like no it's not okay and you can see that it's obviously the mood has changed because now she's being vulnerable and she's crying when moments before it it, it was like you know she was boss bitch she was like you know even joking around but um is this manipulative or is this her just being vulnerable? Kanye already told us that this happened on his interview with Jason. We know she called him for help and it shows what kind of relationship they have despite, you know, going through a divorce at the time. They're still friends and they're still close and they still protect each other. On the call, he's reminding her how powerful she is, how far she's come, um, that she won't get cancelled by any of this and she doesn't need to care what other people think anyway. And you can see her become more confident and you can see her kind of like boss up and she a uh, lawyer calls her back and she gets off the phone and she says i have all the time all the money and all the resources to burn them all to the fucking ground and that's where the first episode title comes from and i'm so proud of my girl like yes bitch you gotta let them know i am kim motherfucking kardashian the episode ends and then we see what we can expect for the rest of the season there is only nine more episodes which i'm upset about but anyway i've just listed them we get to see the inside of snl for the first time following kim's hosting journey and obviously the introduction of her relationship to pete we see Kim and Kendall battle for the American Vogue cover. We see family emergencies. I don't know what that refers to, but there is a fire truck. Um, Courtney's journey, trying to have a baby. We see her get engaged to Travis. Um, we see the family figuring out the Scott situation. Scott's not only fighting with Chris, but Kendall is fighting with Courtney about Scott. Like, 
what's going on here. Then we obviously see Kanye save Kim. We know that's happening with SNL, that he gets the sex tape back for from Rojo's manager. And then we seemingly see them find out about Tristan's cheating scandal. What's really irritating me is that it's clear who is carrying the season. It's clear who is carrying the show on their backs. We barely talk about Kendall besides the Vogue cover and the aggression with Scott. And there is literally no mention of a storyline with Kylie. At all. Boo! Tomato, tomato, tomato! Overall, I'm loving the energy. I'm loving the editing. I It's very modern and very upbeat. I love the way it's shot and definitely the filters are looking more realistic. Like, you can definitely see that they don't actually look like that. There is definitely still filters on them. But the lack of, like, extreme lighting that I think that they had with E, they're looking much more realistic. I love the aesthetic of the video diaries. It's feeling much more authentic um, and in the moment, like them shooting um, in between scenes, Kylie and uh, Kim in the garden doing video diaries, but also set up in a living room um, backdrop, very generic background, but it's still way more comfortable than those plain pink, huge ring light reflecting video diaries from Keeping Up. One thing that I've noticed that's very different from the way that Keeping Up was shot is that the girls are breaking the fourth wall much more. They, they've done it multiple times in this one episode and it's giving very like meta feels. Um, it keeps the audience constantly um, aware that they are watching a reality show. And one of my favorite Kardashian accounts, Kardashian Colloquium, um, has always said that the Kardashian show is not a reality show anymore it's a reality show about a reality show and i think that the breaking of the fourth wall constantly during this episode has kept us aware that we are watching a, a reality show we see the people aware that they are shooting and we aren't swept away by this by the storyline that they are trying to portray but rather that we are just brought along or into their journey I think it's really cool and I think this is how they have made that shift in showing that they are docu-series more than reality show. I just have one thing to complain about besides Chloe and Tristan is 45 minute episodes really. I thought we were getting longer episodes. What is the point of switching to Hulu? Okay, besides all the aesthetic changes that I really, really love and I love the whole vibe of the show. It really does feel like super familiar but super refreshed in a whole package in a whole new way and I think it's done beautifully but why can't we have longer episodes i thought we were having longer episodes quicker turnaround time you know more episodes than 10 in a season like i know that this might be their way of changing up around their schedules and just freeing up more time for themselves but really as a keeping up fan my whole life or their whole keeping up life i'm personally disappointed other than that, I have no issues. I have no issues with saying how obsessed with this I am and how excited I am for this season. Even though Kanye already let us know much of what's going to happen, it's good to see it from the inside. I'm excited for the whole look and feel of the show. And we are only in the beginning. Tomorrow, episode 2 will be uploaded. I'm going to try my best from this week on to upload my recaps on a Friday for you guys so that you won't have to wait long after watching to hear what I think and get into telling me what you thought about the episode. Let me know what you guys thought about the episode. In the comment box below and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it see you next time bye